Good morning, guys. So I figure it's Sunday, and the first video that I can think of to bring to you guys this weekend is going to be jalapeno. Jalapeno, unfortunately, over this past week, developed a knock. It was a tap. The tap would come and go every once in a while, but it turned into a knock, a really bad knock. I'm assuming probably one of the connecting rod bearings is failing because it gets loud, like really loud under load. So I really needed jalapeno to get materials for the bus, but because the bus isn't finished yet, I can pick up materials in the bus. Um, but I would like to get jalapeno back on the road. As you can tell, we have a lot of fun with it. It gets muddy. It gets up there and, and gets down and dirty. So I bought this thing. Uh, this Tahoe's got its own special sort of problems it doesn't run i figure what a great way to make a video on how to get a non-running 5.3 vortex running for all you chevy guys and gm guys i believe that this is going to be a vats issue if not a ground issue i'll show you a couple little tricks and stuff that i learned researching this truck so we'll uh, we'll get in here first and we'll start checking fuses All right, so VAT systems, vehicle anti-theft for GM vehicles. What it does is it sends a signal, line of resistance through a signal wire from the PCM to BCM, which is the body control module. Unfortunately, I feel like this key isn't the original key. So we're gonna do some basic troubleshooting and see, I did order some resistors cause I knew this might've been a problem. We're gonna figure out what what is going on and then we'll take it from there so i'll just get you guys in here real quick so with fuses you want to i mean this is going to be the first first thing to check um, you're going to basically go through here and you're going to find anything that's broken so looks like that 20 is broken so we're going to pull this 20 real fast does look like it's broken i don't have a 20 on me but i do have a 15 so we're gonna pop this 15 in here and then we'll check for any more that are blown uh oh does look like that 10 is blown so we'll just double check that 10 real quick yep that 10's bad too so i do have another 10 we're gonna get this in here. Uh, does look like some of these, some of these do have circuits. So you see how this pin doesn't have pins, but this one does have pins. I'm assuming I think these are like trailer stuff. So we're just gonna put some tens in there. I don't know. You guys don't have to. I'm going to just to make sure we cover all of our bases. Let's see, these 40s look good. It's, oh, wait, what is that? <laughs> nice. Looks like somebody got in there and attempted to fix this guy. So I do have more of these, these maxi fuses. So I will be right back. And we got some spares. All right, so we're gonna get this put in there. Um, another cool thing with these is that this one, this one, and this one, and that one, they're all interchangeable. So if you think the fuel pump's bad, you can always swap it with like the headlight one. If, if your headlights work and just test them by switching them. Does look like also I pulled the computer up here and it looks like somebody cut this yellow wire. Unfortunately, this yellow wire goes to line 58 nope 59 this one goes to 59 it also looks like somebody's been in here already trying to figure it out because i see a bunch of uh wires like that which i'm gonna have to clean up and fix looks like somebody's been in here with a little probe but we'll get a little jumper wire on this real quick it does look like that one's been replaced 
So that's that for here. All right. So got a little jumper wire connecting that one. That yellow wire is actually the signal wire that goes to the BCM, the body control module. Now, the way I understand this is that the PCM, the computer here in the engine bay, sends a signal to the BCM. Now the BCM body control module that sends a signaling wire to the ignition. Uh, most GM keys, they have a little black rectangle on them, uh, which has a built-in resistor. And that wire then goes back to the BCM, if I'm correct. And then the BCM sends a signal to this PCM to fire the engine, directly relating to uh, fuel injectors. We have, this wire repaired. I did look through the rest of this. Everything else in here looks good. Battery's hooked up, that's good. Oh, I also did, I plugged that port. I need to figure out the cap or the valve that goes onto this, because this is the other fuel rail. I went to try to test, test crank it. It'll crank, it just won't start. This was just gushing fuel. So I know the fuel pump's working. I know the fuel pressure regulator is opening because fuel's coming out here. So now let's put this down real quick and let's start testing some stuff. So I'm gonna hook up a negative on my test light. Good ground in here. We're gonna come in here, figure out if these have voltage or not. We will go right here. Can you key on for me? Okay, so we have power there. Coils are getting power. Let's see if the injectors are getting power. Okay, injectors are getting power. We got a light on. Go ahead and crank. One more time. Nope. Okay, so injectors are not firing. So usually injectors, you'll see the pulse signal coming out on here. We are not getting that. So it's either gonna be one of two things. It's gonna be the VAT system, the vehicle anti-theft, or the engine's got some bad grounds. One easy way to figure out if the motor has bad grounds is you just add additional grounds. So let me grab some wires here. We are going to just take two alligator clips. We're going to create some auxiliary grounds that go from the engine block to the body. Okay, got that one on. And then we're also going to take, we're actually going to use this one. We're going to come right off the battery. And then we're going to go to the side of the block over here. Can you go ahead and crank? Nope. Okay, so you hear how it's wanting to start, but it instantly turns off. Let's, uh, let's get back in here real quick. Okay, key on, no start. All right, we got power there. See, if the injectors were pulsing, you'd see this but they are not doing that. Go ahead and crank. Nope. We're gonna check the other side real quick. Yeah, I got no light, no power. Uh, go ahead and crank. Nope, no power. Another easy way to check to make sure that your ignition is working and uh, power is going to your coils, but not to your fuel injectors. Just giving her the old uh, starting fluid down the old apparatus. Just shot of this. We do know that the truck does run off of this, but for a brief second, we will continue isolating and figure out if it's a VATS issue or if it's a bad ground issue. So, all right. So it looks like we got three wires that are coming out of the ignition. So I believe the yellow wire is the signal wire from the BCM. And then there's an orange and black wire that goes back to the BCM that sends the okay signal to the PCM. So we are going to get this cut real quick and then we're gonna get in here and test on these. All right guys, so we got this yellow and orange and black wire. We're gonna pull some of this insulation off of here. And GM, I mean, go figure, GM. GM uses 15 different lines of resistance. Now, an easy way to figure out your resistance is you grab your voltmeter here, you switch it over to the 200. I don't know if I can show this while doing this. 
All right, so you can actually test the resistance in the circuit. So with the key on, and then you're gonna take this red to the orange and black, and then your black to the yellow. And it looks like we got about, we're gonna be roughly a 33K resistor. We get into all of our resistor packs, and we are going to find 33K resistor, or a resistor that is close, that'll allow the truck to signal. That one's 31, yeah, that one's pretty good. That one's a 32.4. You can be within 5%. Yeah, we're, you know what? Yep, we'll try this guy here. So now that we got one, we're gonna wire this guy on and see if this will allow the engine to fire. So we have auxiliary grounds. We verified that we have a good battery. The only thing that we have not verified is the fact that the VAT system is working. Unfortunately, this gauge cluster doesn't work at all. The only thing that actually shows up on this gauge cluster is uh, the check engine light. So let's see if this will start and whether or not we got fuel. I did put some extra gas in this. Hopefully this will start. So we'll find out. So we're gonna try to do that again. We're gonna go wide open, clear out the engine because we've been testing it and we may have flooded it. So we're gonna have to blow some air through it. All right, so that did not work. So if that does not work, we can pull this off and we're gonna flip the ends. All right, so let's see if it will fire now. So because our resistance was close to 34K in that circuit, we are going to get as close as we can to 34K. So we are 33.5 here. I made two, the cool thing is if you wire them, if you wire them in series, you're actually adding resistance. If you wire them in parallel, you actually divide your resistance. You cut the total resistance in half when you wire them in parallel. We're gonna get this uh, wired in here and we will see if this can resolve that no start problem. When you are testing these to see which one is working, you actually have to wait three to five minutes after every time you attach a new resistor to it because it takes three to five minutes for the system to reset so you can try again. So we are going to just wire this guy in and then I will come back as soon as three minutes is up. All right guys, so it's been three minutes. We have the resistance sitting at 35 or 34K because that's what this circuit ohmed out at. So theoretically, with the key in the ignition, I can hear the fuel pump. Okay, so let's uh, try it again. We know, okay, so we flipped that around. Now we have to wait another five minutes. I've been doing research on forums. I've been doing research on just verifying what possible issues this can be or seeing if I can isolate certain issues. We know that the coils have spark. We know that the fuel injectors are hot with key on, but they're not pulsing. So that can usually be one of two things. Uh, first thing is going to be obviously vats, which a lot of people look at. But the next thing is actually going to be bad grounds. Very unlikely that the fuel line is gummed up that bad. If the fuel lines are gummed up really bad and it's bad fuel is sat in there, if multiple injectors fail to fire, then the ECU will shut it all down because the ECU thinks something wrong is happening and, and it'll just automatically shut all the injectors off. Fingers crossed, hopefully that's not the case. So I'm sticking with the vats because that key is clearly not a factory key because it doesn't have a little 
resistor in it. We will figure out here pretty soon. I just gotta wait the five minutes. I figured this would be a good time to talk to you guys about what what's going through my mind, trying to figure out uh, the issues regarding getting the engine started. Because if the engine doesn't start, I don't want it. I don't want to go through this whole hassle, swapping this 5.3 into my truck if this doesn't run. We need to make sure that this runs. After we get it running, there is a trick to isolate the PCM to disconnect it from the BCMs. The powertrain control module, the PCM that's under the hood, you can actually unplug the three connectors to the BCM, the body control module. I'll show you those guys once and if we can get this started. Yeah, I mean, I, it really sucks because I really do like my truck, but coming off the mountain, it started making a really bad noise. And after kind of troubleshooting it, I feel like I'm losing rod bearings um, down in the bottom end. Cause I put a stethoscope to it and it doesn't sound good down there. But I won't know for sure until we get the motor pulled and I get the bottom pan off of it to inspect if there's any play. I'm not gonna mess with it until I get it out and start messing with it because if the motor is good, I have the opportunity to just carb swap that, the TBI engine, I won't have an issue with it. I'll just, I'll just find a Miata or a Datsun or an old Z and swap into uh, something small and fun. So here we are, counting down. We're about three and a half minutes into this, so. Once, uh, once we get to that five minute mark, the computer should reset itself. And then once the computer resets itself, we should be able to try with this 33K on that circuit. You have to be close enough. You don't have to be exact. It did show on a couple of the, the forums, isolate the key in resistance. There's 15 different settings in resistance. Unfortunately, 34 or 33.4 resistance that we're getting out of the ignition doesn't match any of the 15 from the factory. I'm thinking, should I go a 37? Cause there is a 3740 that is on GM's list of the 15 different resistors. But let's, uh, let's try to start it. All right, so five minutes is up. Get this key in here. See if she starts. All right, guys. So let's uh, let's try it now. Hopefully, I actually threw a 36k in there because that's closer to the 3740 that GM states. Even though that we are getting like 33.4 between 33.4 and 34.6 on our gauge here. I still feel like that's a little too low, but we'll find out. Let's try it. Oh. Let's try it. Okay, so now with the engine running, the trick to bypass all that is you come in here and then in here, you can see the body control module. While it's running, we're gonna disconnect all these. Once those are all disconnected, the ECU will go into a standalone mode, which it will not need to register the body control module to start the engine. So 
fact that uh, it hasn't been on the road, well, at least registered a CAD since 2019, so it's been, been quite a long time. Uh, not seeing much smoke for a vehicle that's out for three years. That's always good, but yeah, runs pretty good. Sounds good. I don't hear any lifter ticks. It might need to be cleaned up. Maybe uh, I do hear. Sounds like either throttle position or IAC might need to be replaced because it really does hesitate on the throttle up. But yeah, it all works and it's working how it should work. You might be seeing this in that and i also so today is sunday i have tomorrow off and we're gonna be cleaning out the big bus and getting a game plan started for that because we're still overcast but no rain all right guys thanks for checking it out peace